Welcome to the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. I am your host, Rob Gothier, the ET Whisperer. The Enlightenment Evolution Hour is a part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Any ideas or opinions expressed by myself, the guest, or a caller may not necessarily reflect the same opinions of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Enlightenment defined. It's the state of giving and receiving greater knowledge and understanding about a certain subject or situation. Evolution defined the gradual development of something, especially from a simple to a more complex form. So what then is enlightenment evolution? The state of giving and receiving greater knowledge as we develop from a simple to a more complex human being living on earth for our soul's experience welcome now and join us as we explore our enlightenment evolution hour together hey hey everybody welcome to the enlightenment evolution hour i am your host rob goth here and this is the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the show tonight. We have an amazing show with an amazing guest. Uh, Maria Martinez is here with us tonight, and we will be talking with her in just a few minutes. Before we do that, I want to say, first of all, uh, welcome to all of you who are here with us. We simulcast the show every night, or every Wednesday night, pardon me, uh, at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern, at 7 Pacific, and we do so simulcast on both the Matrix Minds Facebook page and the Enlightenment Evolution Hour Facebook page, as well as the ET Whisper YouTube channel. Welcome all. After the show is done, we redistribute those into the Forbidden Knowledge News Network and Conscious Awakening News Network. So welcome all, welcome all. Thank you guys for coming tonight. I appreciate everyone in the chat already lively, already moving up. Uh, hello, Brainiacs, and hello, my ET Whisper fam. How are you guys doing tonight? We have a few quick announcements. The announcements that we have are, are relatively easy. Um, the network announcements, we don't have any more news on the mothership or um, out there talk with Valiant himself. We will have more information for that as it comes. We also have uh, some more guests that will be joining us here in the Enlightenment Evolution Network. We've had, or on the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, we have had uh, a bit of an intensive week. So we don't have uh, all of the guests named yet. We're still waiting back on two or three people for specific dates. But we will let you know as we know. uh, And we do have three or four guests lined up further down the trough towards the end of this month and the beginning of next month. But... Uh, All to do with everything that's exciting. Uh, We will announce that as it goes and check it out on the Enlightenment Evolution Hour Facebook page until the website's back up. Also, uh, for the show and network, those are done. For the ET Whisper, we have uh, a lot of great things going on. The the email list was just put back out, the uh, email updates that we do. And it announced a couple of large events that we have going on. The three-day Sedona retreat, which will be uh, in September, and will be on the Equinox. And that energy is going to be extraordinarily awesome. Ruben Langdon, myself, will be doing some CE5s on top of the retreat. The information uh, can be found on the website uh, by this weekend. We'll have the entire website updated with that. And also the uh, big one, the Conscious Life Expo out in Los Angeles. I will be there uh, early February. I believe it's the 9th through 12th. And we'll have a booth and we'll be doing 90 minutes and 45 minute lecture and workshops is there. Uh, All of that also will be on the website and announced by this weekend. Also, if you're a part of the email list, Uh, There are discounts for all services uh, and all old digital archived information. Also, we have our Patreon, uh, two tiers, which we do two extra channelings there per month. So check that out, guys. Now, 
as much as I could talk about what's going on in the world, all those things, if you really want to know, just go to any of our social media. We try to share all the important stuff out to all of them. And then uh, we can kind of give you an idea of more things of what's going on. But let's instead talk about our guest. Uh, Maria Martinez uses her ability, healing abilities, to facilitate wealth consciousness and human potential activation. Reconnection to your divine light, unlocking your power, brilliance, embody your authentic expression with confidence, resolve, and certainty, magnifying your ability to create a new powerful reality full of joy, health, and prosperity. And there's a lot of great things that she does, uh, a lot of great work that she puts in. And instead of telling you all about it, I think we just bring in uh, Maria herself and have her uh, share what she's doing, uh, how things work and all of that. Hello, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you being here. Thank you, Rob. It's my pleasure. Very exciting to be here with all of you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's going to be a, a treat tonight. I, I don't, I haven't got a chance to know you uh, yet, which is something which is kind of different from a lot of the guests that we have. I, I, I've gotten to know them uh, throughout years or, you know, have bumped into them for multiple months, but I'm fairly new with uh, you and your work. So it'll be a pleasure for all of us to learn together tonight uh, and just to have a great chat. I, I was able to see the interview you did earlier today, a part of it. Oh, My wife great. and I bumped into it. Yeah. And it was really great. And I really <laughs> liked a lot of the things that you were saying and sharing too. So uh, yeah, it'll be amazing time. And, and Debbie, uh, one of our previous guests, Debbie Dashinger, uh, speaks very, very highly of you too. So oh, uh, thank you. Lovely. Yeah, she's she's wonderful. So the first thing I want to ask is the same thing I ask everyone. Uh, not so much what is your story per se uh, of you know how you came to do all the work that you're doing now, but more of what kind of set you up to to be the person that you are. I, I know, uh, unlike a lot of guests that we have, um, you had really early contact and communication. So it might be one and the same as your story, but if you can share kind of how your childhood, young adulthood shaped the reality for you that opened up this work, uh, sharing it with the public. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I was, I was fortunate to know and have communication with my angels actually very early on. So I, I say that I was uh, awakened very early, as, as young as I can remember, like five, four years old, um, having conversations with that, with angels, guides, not really knowing who they were, what they were, or not really making a distinction. They, they just felt very familiar to me, very natural. Um, and, and I also started doing some of the work that I do now very early on around those years. And again, it just felt very natural, very familiar to me. I didn't even question what they were asking me to do. And the work that I did very early on was actually freeing souls, souls from um, from being in bondage, being um, captive, uh, being um, interfered with, um, being held um, like imprisoned. So as I as I got a little bit older, I began to discern the difference of you know seeing with your mind's eye seeing with your physical eye and then seeing outside your physical eye through or another dimension. Um, it, it was still familiar, so I wasn't really scared. And I just felt really connected to my guys, to the angels. And again, I, I feel like this is this is a relationship that I had with them before. That's why I felt so familiar and so comfortable. And this is the work that I, I did in other lifetimes. So I felt, again, so familiar, so comfortable. Um, I never really questioned that work, uh, the work that I was doing. Um, and as I got a little bit older and I started to talk about it, that's when my, my parents noticed, not necessarily that I had a gift, but noticed that I was on the path of, you know, my grandparents because my grandparents were also very gifted curanderos. Uh, so they realized, oh, okay, so we, I ran to the family and she's taking it on. Um, their their advice was to keep it quiet because we were we had just moved here from Mexico. It was a new environment. We didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, we didn't have people to support us in the spiritual side uh, at, 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 during that time until a little bit later. So my mom just felt like I wasn't ready 
for it um, to to let people know and actually work physically with other people. Um, so I just continue my work with the angels and the spiritual realms and the astral plane uh, and their guidance. So I would say that they are, they were my first mentors in this journey, in this lifetime, uh, because I've had other mentors, uh, physical mentors and other angelic beings that were my mentors. But I would say that that they were my mentors. And also, you know, we talk about maybe what what made you realize, because when we're kids, we play so much in this field, right, in the field of imagination. We play, we imagine fairies, we imagine angels, and maybe we don't call them angels, but we play. Uh, and and I I feel like what created that awareness was the shock of the move from Mexico to here. So being in a new environment and feeling alone in the world um, or feeling disconnected from the world, but I found, I found connection with my guides and my angels. So that was, was an awakening for me to, uh, to see, notice, understand that what I was experiencing was different than what other kids experience. And again, that journey continued. And in college, I had a similar experience as well because I left to college um, into an environment that was very different than what I was raised in. And, and then it was a shock to my system. So everything was very much amplified. And the way I describe my experience is being in different dimensions all at once. And sort of like that movie, everything, all, all, you know, every, everything all at once, right? Uh, <laughs> where different dimensions were open and I was experiencing what was happening and seeing and noticing, being aware, like looking in, um, but having an awareness of myself too, being in my room and in, in my dorm room. And also physically seeing them come in, and I mean physically because I could see them standing next to me, coming into my space and Sometimes just taking up my space, sometimes having a message, sometimes just being disruptive. So I had to really learn to manage this part of myself um, or understand it and then find ways to master it. Um, in my earlier interview, this question came up and what I what and this is something I want to share, too, is that. I, I you know, my parents came from this background of knowing this lineage of healer, shaman, curanderos. And a lot of the kids and a lot of us really become activated when there's something different going on, uh, also in our physical body. So puberty is one of those things that could awaken us. And fortunately, I already knew, you know, a part of myself and I wasn't rejecting that part of myself and I wasn't afraid of, part of that part of myself. So navigating through these years wasn't as difficult as it might be for other kids who all of a sudden are hearing things. All of a sudden, their, you know, their sight is more focused or all of a sudden they're feeling things around them. So I was fortunate enough to maneuver through that a little bit um, easier. But even then, with that awareness of who I was and my lineage, I still felt I needed support to really master this because I, you know, it was just kind of taking over my life in my college years. So I came back home, we had a conversation with my parents and then we talked to our friend, one of our friends who was a shaman and she decided to take me on and she became my first mentor. And our, our journey after that was learning tools to just, you know, manage it. It wasn't, I wasn't really ready to step into service and contribution. You know, there were still other things that I needed to learn along the way, but that was the starting point that got me to where I am here and now. That's amazing. It's it's something that I always uh, am in awe of when people uh, come into Earth and choose to have, you know, before entering, keeping their tools intact and keeping their connections intact. Uh, it's not a choice that, that a lot of souls do. Uh, and I know my own hardship with going through my experience being very disconnected throughout my, my childhood, uh, having some phenomenal experiences, but very few. And they were always pushed away as imagination or a dream or, or whatever else could be. So I can't imagine uh, that experience. Can you describe to everyone kind of you know, the, the process that you had to go through in order to discern what was in the body, what was around the body, what was very physical and what wasn't since you were able to kind of see uh, and mm -hmm. communicate and connect with these beings? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we all have our clairs and I 
I have them all um, open and activated. Uh, so I could see in I could see their light, but I also could see their density. So I could see them in color as if they were standing next to me. Um, like a normal person, you know, normal person next standing next to you. Sometimes they had more density than, than others. Um, and that had to do with some of the work that they were doing. The angels always showed up in this beautiful light that was translucent, but there was it, you know, there was some color that felt very, you know, physical to them. Um, their voice was very soothing. Uh, sometimes it was harmonic. Sometimes it was just the the voice, you know, like the voice uh, you having a conversation like we're having here. Um, and even their touch, uh, their touch was very warm. Um, it was just very gentle. Like you can feel the warmth and the intention as if, you know, your grandparent or your, your mother, it's, you know, somebody that's very caring toward you and being very gentle toward you and you feel their warmth and you feel the support. And you feel, and actually their presence was very much like that too. It, it was very empowering when they came in. There was always a shift in the energy, like a shift in the air, in the atmosphere when they came in from, you know, from kind of being unsettled to feeling grounded, feeling connected, feeling supportive, feeling empowered or powerful um, when they came in. And, and if other, also my experience with other beings that were not so high vibrational, when they're, when they came in, it was actually a little bit different. It wasn't as it wasn't as warm. It was actually sometimes I feel chills when a lower vibration of being came in, and their colors were very different. Um, there were darker, denser. Sometimes they didn't even have the actual um, distinction of their body. It was either just a shadow or it almost looked like a blur. Um, uh, and when they were physical, like when they were in, in there trying to show their physical form, um, they looked like any normal person um, standing there. And, uh, you know, there was that was for many reasons. Sometimes it was, you know, because they wanted to deceive. Sometimes it was because they wanted to create a level of comfort. And one of the things that I asked from the very beginning was to be able to discern. However, I could discern I wanted to have that level of discernment. So the way things would show up, um, I would either know, so I'd have the knowing that this wasn't in the light or in alignment, whatever image, whatever entity, whatever interference. Um, you know, and this is across time uh, and space because I've had visitors as well from other, um, other gal galaxies and times and spaces. So I asked for discernment. I asked to know whether I felt it, whether I, I saw it, whether they showed up in a different way. When I was young, um, you know, a lot of times when you ask for discernment, the way things are given to you or, or what you're already familiar with. So when I was young, when I used to see them in the astral plane, they were all, the ones that were not of the light were always dressed in black and black and sometimes had, you know, red eyes. Um, or sometimes they, the face was invisible. You, you couldn't really tell, it was like a blur. So somehow that for me, or that's how I related to it. So that's the way they show up. And that's, that was my discernment. Um, the beings that were of the light, uh, either they wore very light color clothing. They had a, like really gentle energy, powerful energy, uh, but it was very supportive, very loving. Um, and they always... Um, came in uh, in this beautiful glow. And when the angels came in, they always came in their beautiful glow. And sometimes in their color, I could, um, you know, if it was uh, Archangel Michael, um, at least for me, he came in in a blue color. Uh, Archangel Raphael came in in a green color. So they had their color. So that was how sort of the relationship I had with them, that it, uh, it was specific to them and I always knew. Um, so, you know, how to how did that come about? I think that I, because I was aware to some degree of what was happening, and I also had my knowledge from other lifetimes. I sort of prepared my younger self by asking for that discernment. I sort of prepared myself, I, you know, without even knowing what I was asking or what I without really understanding my journey, um, because I remember clearly say, saying, saying. <laughs> 
I want to know, need to know. That's part of the, so in my own little way, this is the agreement. This is part of the agreement. Show me, you know, who I can trust. Show me who's of the light. Show me. Um, and then that's how, yeah, that's how it evolved. Well, that's, that's very amazing. And, and, you know, we had a couple questions as through the, the chat going on and you've mentioned several times, you know, a shadow person or a person with blurry features or someone whose face was blank. Um, you, to your understanding, you know, with shadow people and these other beings, what types of beings do these often, uh, you know, represent and why do we see them like that? Is that something that they show themselves as or something that our perspectives uh, from our own psychic intuition can receive in that way? Why do we experience them without those features? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really good, good question. And I think the answer is both of what you're asking. Um, and, be, and also, um, they're not always bad, by the way, you know, Sometimes they would show up and I wasn't able to distinguish their features, but that didn't mean that they were, you know, they were coming in in, in the darkness. Um, what I felt during that time is that I wasn't ready to see. I wasn't ready to see. Um, so that was one of the things or one of the reasons. And the other one is that they weren't ready to reveal themselves to me. Um, but again, the discernment wasn't always if they you know, if their face is blurry, then they're bad. It was how do I feel about them? Uh, how are they coming in? What is, you know, so there was, it was more detailed than that. Um, I, I got to a point where it didn't matter if I could see their faces or not, because actually often they would stand behind me. So I, I didn't turn around and look at them. It was just, you know, I just had them knowing that they were behind me and guiding me and that telling me what to do and directing me. So often I didn't see their faces, but I knew they were there. I could feel they were there. And of course, you know, some of them were communicating with me. So um, I think I get a long, longer about answer um, to say that the blurry face could mean different things. Either you're not ready or they're not ready. Doesn't always mean that they're bad. Um, and also it could be your psyche that it hasn't sort of put the features or it hasn't put the information, hasn't had an experience connected. So it doesn't know how to create it for you. I, I love that. A lot of people do assume, you know, you see uh, a fully dark, uh, you know, featureless being that it's got to be something negative or bad. But uh, a lot of the time, you know, something one of my guides described, you know, the reason that we see these beings in different ways sometimes isn't necessarily even a perspective or orientation, but it can be the way that these beings draw energy. A lot of people uh, who are humans who have passed on, uh, want to contact people on earth and they don't know how to do it. So they're using energy of light and they're absorbing that light energy to try to physically make uh, a physical body or, or some kind of physical thing that you can see so that you can know that they're there. And, and sometimes that's light. Uh, so they absorb light. And sometimes when you're cold, it's because they're absorbing the thermal energy, the heat energy around you. Um, and when they're white, sometimes they're just pulling in like electromagnetic energy. So a lot of different reasons uh, that he described that um, for, you know, at least humans who are going through. What have you noticed uh, in your experience about humans in between lives? Because that's something that I really don't connect with. I don't, I don't connect with that energy. I understand the energy. Um, but I don't personally do that. And it's always been an excitement of mine. So what, what can you kind of tell us first about, you know, what it's like to experience the humans who are, who are uh, between their incarnations? And secondly, um, kind of what the energy is for. Why, why do they wait or, or have transitionary periods between lives? Mm, okay, yeah. There's a number of reasons why they could be in that space. Um, one is something that it's unresolved. Um, you know, they're completing. So when we choose to come into a journey, when we choose to come into to have a human experience, we choose you know, how we're going to evolve, what we're going to learn, or what how we're going to facilitate that evolution for others. So we we enroll our soul family, and we agreed, hey, you're going to you know you're going to teach me how to love myself, and I'll teach you how to forgive. So we, we 
create all these sort of agreements and contracts with each other. And our, the intention is to evolve, right, as much as we can on this journey. And of course, we have free will and we have our multidimensional part, the mind, the emotions that also plays a role, the ego, that's part of that. So we can make this journey really easy or we can make this journey really hard depending on you know, our level of awareness and all of that. So when we complete this part of the journey, sometimes we forget that we agree to this. So we end up, especially if it, we ended up in a state of shock, like an accident or some kind of trauma, we forget that, and this is not always the case, but this is one, you know, one of the reasons why, um, that we agree to complete and we agree to, again, free will, um, however that may show up, but we weren't very specific about how. And we end up sort of, first of all, being pushed out of the body. And we're kind of in this space of confusion until we can recognize or sometimes until somebody else can help, can help us reconcile what just happened and then be able to, to see, okay, I see where I'm at. I see that I'm completed now. I see the path forward. Now I'm going to move forward. Or, oh, I see what happened. Uh, I wasn't quite ready to leave. There's still this thing that I, this incomplete. Maybe I needed to leave, say, you know, leave a message for somebody, relay a message to somebody. Maybe I just need to wait for this to happen. Um, or maybe I'm not ready to move on. I just need a little bit more time. Uh, so a number of reasons you know, why we hang out and also why we wait to go into the next level of our journey or, or to choose the next level. Um, when you know, I, did, I did sort of this, um, and, and I walk people through this regression, going into a regression to see the past lives and interlife. Um, and in the interlife, it's, it's interesting because we can ask divine source many questions, but we can also see and gather information from our other lifetimes. And we, we can also see the experience. It's almost like doing our, going back and doing our life review from all those other lifetimes and then see what we want to learn, what we already learned, and then kind of prepare ourselves for this journey. Um, how, however, if we had not so good experiences in our previous lifetime, maybe we are not ready to jump in right away and, and we delay coming into the next incarnation with delay. So it's very similar to holding on to this one. Um, that one is not wanting to come into the next one, but it, it's again, very similar because of the experience we had, because of what we feel is incomplete or, or we're still working through. Uh, or it's just, you know, we just need a little bit more time to fully feel ready. Uh, sometimes that work doesn't have to do with anybody we left behind. It's our own work, spiritual work at that level. And we're just doing that work so we can finally move on or finally choose what's going to be next for us. So I hope that answers the question or I hope that gives you a little bit of kind of an insight of many, maybe some of the reasons why we hang on or we stay back, we hold back a bit. Oh, absolutely. It's a very, very interesting perspective. And, and uh, I, I can see a lot of souls who get ready in, in that way of, of leaving and they finally leave and they realize how much of that energy and, and things behind them. And yeah, the accidents and, and car accidents, murders, things like that tend to be a really really rough with people um the abruptness of, of leaving their life and, and doing all that stuff it's it's definitely got to be rough i know um a lot of souls that are disturbed tend to hang around a lot longer and 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 disconnection so yeah it makes a lot of sense thank you for for sharing that and, and something i was interested in as you were sharing too as you're sharing kind of your story and, and the way that you came into this was around the shamanism about your family uh, having shamans within it and having uh, family members who had that connection in your childhood so can you tell us a little bit about uh the, the family lineage of, of shamans and then tell us a little bit more about what it was like to train with a shaman and be guided by a shaman to to open up your shamanism mm -hmm. yeah well growing up in that feel it was more like growing up in a space of faith like there was a, a strong sense of knowing not necessarily religious faith but it was more of a a strong sense of knowing and connection 
the you know, when I looked at my grandfather, he had such a deep level of certainty and creative energy. Like he just knew, he just had this, you know, he was a creator. And, you know, that was both coupled by that faith that he had on, on what's possible, you know, with stepping into possibility and creating from that space of knowing and from the space of knowing himself and what he was able to do in terms of sharing his gifts and helping others heal. So, um, it, you know, growing up, it was very much like that. Um, and I only spent a couple of years with him because then we moved here, but I could see that same level in, in my mom, the same level of radical trust, radical knowing, even though, you know, there was times where it felt lonely and there was a level of disconnection, that spark was still there. So I would say that um, it's, it's what a lot of us, you know, what we gravitate to is that connection with self, connection with source, connection with the higher power, uh, connection uh, with the d divine and divine light within us that creates this level of certainty, this level of everything's going to be okay. And you know, it's just, you know, it, being in that place of possibility and creation. And also that it helps you lean into the creative nature, um, you becoming a creator. Um, so I would say that at, that you know those years that I spend with them, and then even going back and visiting, um, I was in awe of him. And um, and then later working with our friend, she was um, very gifted, very knowledgeable. She actually channeled uh, physically, you know, so I had conversations with other beings uh, with her or through her that were also guiding me in many different ways. We did a lot of different activations. Um, That's amazing. Activating the, yeah, activating um, a lot of the ancient wisdom that was already there, um, initiations into, yeah, into uh, the lineage of shamanism and um, very many different ceremonies. Um, I, I call them, they look like ceremonies, but they were really activations that happened. And, um, she, she taught me very different things. One of the things that she first started me with was the tarot because for her, I, I, at least this was her, what her um, advice to me was, you know, there's so much going on. You're accessing so much. You just need to hone it in, hone it in, and let's put it into something specific that can be translatable. So she said, let's start with the tarot. And that's what we started with. And that was many years ago. Um, and then from there, it just evolved into many different things. Uh, she's passed, my grandparents have passed, but I often see them, you know, in, during my meditations coming in, even just uh, simply as I'm sitting in, in my office or in my living room, they'll come in and I feel their hand over on my shoulder. Um, I'll have conversations with them and they're still mentoring me. They're still just recently had an activation with my grandmother in a circle of uh, shaman women. And it was, it was really interesting is that we were, um, the activation that we were doing was connected to the magic of the Kabbalah, uh, which I didn't know, my, you know, that connection. But of course, you know, we have many lifetimes and that's what we're accessing our ancient wisdom for many li lifetimes that is now becoming available to us because we're now more awake, because we're now more in our flow, because we're now in the state of receiving. Therefore, we're accessing more of who we are, our potential. So it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful and magical. Uh, sounds amazing. And, and I really admire uh, when people can still carry that relationship over even after death um, or, or physical death, being able to, to still work with loved ones or, or connect with them or, or like you were doing, both getting love and support from the energy and the activations too. So that's that's something that's really fascinating. Um, I, I wanted to also talk to you about the Galactic Roots. I've heard you say many times, and even in your bio, um, you know, connected to multiple versions of you through multiple galaxies and, and kind of tying galaxies together. Um, what is your experience with that? I know you said you've had access to those different parts of you in different time and space, but can you describe a little bit more about, about your experiences with that and kind of, uh, 
you know, catch us up on, on what that actually is or, or what it's experienced as by you and, and kind of what it brings to you in, in your work. Yeah. Um, it, so it's, it's interesting, you know, how, you know, your, the question that you asked in terms of my work, um, because everything for me, everything is consciousness. Everything is intelligence. That's how I relate to everyone and everything here and everyone else across time, space, dimensions. Um, and that's what my work is. But because I see everything as divine light, divine intelligence, I have access to everything, right? Uh, sometimes it wants to show up, it has a message, so it wants to come through, and then there's that information. Um, and I started really playing with this, like this having access to infinite intelligence, having access to divine intelligence, having access to the universal field. Uh, and I started doing a lot of astro travel. And in this, in the astro travel, I started connecting with other beings, you know, some that are well known, like the Octarians, Pleiadians. And of course, they started coming into my uh, session. They just, you know, they would be there, they would be supporting, and they would even you know, help with the activations. They would bring in higher frequencies during my work. So that was amazing. That was wonderful. And, and that process continued because I really like, like to explore. I, I really like to explore, not necessarily go out and explore the universe, but yes, exactly. That's actually what we're doing because everything is consciousness. Everything is vibration. Everything is divine intelligence. So as I explore more, I was able to connect to different other beings around and versions of myself. And I can see my many different timelines and uh, some of the roles that I've had and some of the roles that I still have in other times and dimensions. And one of those roles, which is very similar to here, but this is at a smaller scale. Right? Here on Earth, uh, I'm a facilitator of light. I'm a, I'm a facilitator of human potential. I'm a facilitator of wealth consciousness. So some of it is really connected to Earth to the 3D. Some of it is, you know, the higher states of awareness. And at a bigger scale, so we're looking at another galaxy. I'm still a facilitator. I'm still supporting in, in, in my very work that I did early on, which was freeing the souls here on Earth. Now at that higher scale is freeing the planets from you know, other beings that are, you know, not of the light, don't have best intention, have their own agenda. And it's more like um, recognizing, uh, not, obviously not interfering with free will, but supporting the ascension, supporting the awakening, supporting um, new technologies that are advancing light beams across galaxies uh, and helping almost not necessarily going out and policing, but noticing when there's some interference and working with other beings like myself that are in other dimensions and other galaxies to support and continue to weave. And weaving is, you know, this recognizing ourselves, the new knowledge that is coming in, the awareness, new information that is coming out, coming in that we're not alone. So we're weaving the galaxies together into oneness, into even teleportation, into, you know, um, by location, uh, which is something that I've done in, even in, in taking people through by locating. So that's the work that is being done at that level, at that other higher scale. And it's happening, you know, at that level, at, at that frequency. And of course, this version of myself is here in this body and here doing my facilitation, working with humanity, working with um, uh, helping awaken other light beings that are taking in a body and coming into this lifetime other light travelers that are coming in and having a human experience. So it's, um, it's I would say it's one and the same, just at a different scale. Yeah, it makes sense here. You're zooming out to the larger parts of consciousness that we are all connected to and, and a part of and seeing your own role uh, and, and connection there. And that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and seeing it in those terms really brings it, uh, loops it all together too, to how you're doing that work on the scale. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your work on Earth here as this this version of you, this part of you? Um, 
I, I know that your your biggest excitement and biggest goal is to help people understand their oneness and, and understand their limitlessness, their creatorship, their divinity, their potential, all, all of these things that all of us as creator beings have access to or, or or not have access to, but are, but, you know, as humans, we all like to see it as have access to, but um, can, can you share like an example of what you would do with a person to help them through that process? Uh, yes. And the question that you asked me earlier is it, powerful because it helps me see from that higher scale perspective, the potential that we have here on earth, right? As creator beings, we have infinite potential or infinite possibility. And what I love to do is help people connect to that, to help them understand that we're so much more than the body. You know, the body is our beautiful temple that is our vessel that supports our soul, our spirit, our energetic system, the supports that holds you know, it's the space that holds everything, but we are so much more in the story that we're living in or the journey that we're on is just one story that we've chosen to experience. We're a character in this chapter. We're, we're a character in this story that we're living. And I love to help people expand their awareness so that they can see for themselves that they're not a victim to their situation. They're not a victim to their environment. They're not a at the effect of life, that they can expand their words and see where they lost themselves and how to find themselves again and come back to their truth and then start creating from that place. They can start connecting to that remembrance, that infinite knowledge and wisdom within them that is infinite possibility and infinite potentiality. So I help them heal in many different ways, multidimensionally, soul, spirit, uh, energetic systems, physical body, to move into the space of self-actualization. And in this, in as they're moving on that journey, they're up-leveling, they're activating, they're embodying their new potential, the next version of themselves. And they're showing up very different in the different areas of their life. So they're also upgrading those areas of their life. They're also healing those areas. They're healing their relationship with money. They're healing their relationship with their families, their childhood, their inner child, they're healing their relationship with their body. So they're transforming 360. They're transforming at every level. And then they're taking action from the higher space. They get very aligned and very congruent. And this is, of course, a practice, a practice of connecting to yourself, a practice of choosing, a practice of recognizing your thoughts, a practice of holding a higher vibration in your heart and then embodying that new behavior, embodying that new version of you and then taking guided action to bridge that to the 3D here, in, here and then manifest in a new reality, manifest wealth, manifest opportunities, manifest a new relationship, manifest a new life. And it's, you know, it may sound easy or it may sound abstract, however it sounds, it's, it's doable, possible, and it's actually practical. You can really take the steps to move forward and see yourself where you are and see yourself on this journey to living your greatest life. So it's really powerful and really amazing. And I love doing this work because I love to see people in their truth, own their power, own their truth, you know, be their full expression, live out loud, play out loud, be visible, dream big, you know, live in the space of infinite possibility and pure potentiality and celebrating and then of course creating a ripple effect around them inspiring others to be the same do the same and being the beacon of light for others shining the path the way for others so that for me is so joyful it's you know it's a it's is sharing my gifts but also a gift that i receive when i see that and i see that happening yeah, well, it's there's nothing more rewarding than seeing people uh, you're working with do the, the best that they can do and, and succeed and, and get the things that they want to get. I, I guess uh, part of my uh, last question, too, had to do with understanding it from an, uh, an abstract and very human level. When, when we hear people uh, are going to work with us on these things to try to open up our energy, 
and our oneness and our understanding more, um, there's, there's a lot of different ways uh, that people try to assist others with that. Sometimes it's a very mental exercise, sometimes a very emotional, sometimes both, sometimes has nothing to do with any of that. And I imagine when you're working with people, each person's going to probably be pretty different how you work with them directly and, and kind of do that. But what are some of the, the practices that, that you go through with them? Or do you teach them things? Or do you have them do exercise? Uh, my my mm, idea is yeah. kind of what what's the, the, the course of actions that you go through with these people to help mm -hmm. them understand these things? Yeah, so, so it is very customized. And the approach is multidimensional. So we may do some mind uh, reprogramming or recoding, and we may do some hypnotherapy or some deep meditations. Um, we do uh, some ancestral work um, or a healing at the spiritual level or the physical level. So we may go into a DNA healing, DNA repairs, DNA activations. Um, maybe they're holding old trauma in their bodies. So we go into where the trauma is being held, and, and that could be in the spirit, that can be in the soul, that can be in the physical body, in a specific organ. So we're doing different levels of healing at, with the different bodies as, as we're approaching. And um, the other thing may be that there's something attached to them. Like we were talking earlier about interferences, uh, lower vibration of beings, discarded energies, occupants, walk-ins. There may be something else interfering with them that is, you know, that they came in with into this lifetime or that became attached over a course of time or that it may be a manifestation of their own thoughts and feelings and emotions. So we we do that work to free them again, to get them into the space of alignment, into the space of sovereignty. And one of the things that I always look for is their connection to spirit. Is their spirit connected to them? Is their spirit in their body? And oftentimes, and I would say probably 80% of the time, maybe no, maybe a little bit more, the spirit is not in the body. Um, and when the spirit is on the body, you often feel confused. You often feel like there's you have no direction. You often feel like your body's not really supporting you. So you have symptoms, aches and pains. Um, and when the spirit is on the body, there may be, again, something else in the body occupying the space that is creating those other uh, symptoms, painful things in your body. So this is why we take that, yeah, that multidimensional approach so that we are clearing the space. Uh, we are addressing what is interfering at whatever level so that you can come back to sovereignty. You can come back to being your authority. You can come back to being able to make decisions that are going to move you closer to your divine path. Um, and that work, um, removing entities, um, we do that again at the spiritual level. We look into the chakras as well. We look into um, unresolved things from other lifetimes that may be like there may be some courting from other lifetimes. We look at karma. Um, soul contracts as well. We look at projections from others. It's it very, it's, it's, we really clean house. <laughs> it's very in depth, but again, it's based on what, what is your goal? What would you desire? What, what, you know, is your greatest intention? What would you like to see happen in your life? Um, and that could go into the money situation. And if people want to uh, change their money situation, then we look at set points around money, blockages around money. We look at their relationship, their story about money. We look at how the energy of money and abundance and prosperity, because, you know, they're really all the same, but we often have it set up separately because we relate to it separately. Um, I look at how is that showing up in your field? Is it in your field? Is it not in your field? You know, whose story are you living? Yours or somebody else's? But is there anything connected to, again, to your ancestral lineage? Are you, you know, you are, what are you playing out? Uh, poverty consciousness or... Uh, poverty contracts so it's uh it's fun to do all this work because i can see you know almost like a discovery of yourself uh, and it's very empowering very healing it creates a new path to move forward um and then again it uh, it starts moving you in the direction of reconnecting to yourself and to your truth and your truth is sovereignty your truth is abundance your truth your truth is I am divine power. 
uh, and there's so much more that we do because we do a lot of activations as well. Um, and a lot of DNA activations, uh, bringing in also source codes. Um, also, again, like I mentioned earlier, other divine beings will come in and they'll support, they'll, be, they'll bring higher frequencies. They may even create uh, healing chambers for you um, that they feel at that moment if you're, you're ready to experience it and experience that that new level. So uh, it's the work is very vast and very deep and very powerful and very customized to your situation, your needs, your desires, your goals. Yeah, it may it makes sense too. The customization would would have to occur just because so many people are different and, and different needs. But it, that gives me some insight onto the types of, of techniques and energies that you use and really it is a multi-dimensional approach if you're doing things like you know uh reprogramming of the mental energy and doing uh you know energetic reads regressionist types uh, of reads uh energy understandings connecting to guides uh and channeling that's a lot of energy from a lot of angles so uh, i'm positive that working with more than uh two or three different type of people like literally each of them will have something almost completely different from start to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, that's amazing. And uh, I really appreciate you giving me the insight on that. I, I also, you know, kind of wanted to, to understand too, um, part of your own energy and, and the work that you do with people uh, has to do with physical healing. So I'm trying to get your, your perspective on first why uh, physical bodies get out of alignment and, and have health issues. And secondly, you know, what's the way to work with that? I'm sure, you know, each mm -hmm. person being different and everything, but what, what's kind of the main theme of, of work that one would have to do with their bodies to get it in, in mm -hmm. better shape? Yeah. So one way that you can look at your body, um, is your house, right? Is your house that has many different rooms. And if you only spend time in one part of your house, then eventually dust is gonna collect in the other parts of your house or other things may collect in other parts of your house. So you is your spirit, right? Your spirit having that connection with your body, connection with your house uh, and not fully owning. So if you're not in the rest of your house, you're not really owning that space. So that allows a vacancy to appear where other things can come in and occupy that lower vibration. So that's one, one thing that could happen with your body. And then now your body feels dense and then that starts manifesting as a symptom, as an imbalance, as an illness, or even a disorder. So when that's when they and then and then if we look at the body or if we look at it from the space of maybe emotional trauma. Uh, in your childhood or another lifetime that you brought forth, if you have emotional trauma, then that trauma gets caught or, or stuck in your physical body. And um, it never really got an opportunity to process, you never really got an opportunity to feel it. So that can also show up in your body as something like cancer, like an autoimmune, like, um, uh, like, like something that is very chronic. Um, and what it is, the emotion that is being played out is hatred or self-hate, that trauma. Uh, and of course, it's not, it, it's coupled with other things like rejection, abandonment, um, not fitting in, not feeling important, not feeling wanted, so feeling neglected, um, or even betrayal, especially if that trauma is connected to your boundaries, like uh, abuse, uh, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, or sexual. Uh, so that trauma gets you know, gets stuck, and then it manifests into other things. They can also manifest as weight, obesity, because that part of you that wants to run away from that, wants to hide, wants to feel safe. So there's a number of reasons why you know, physical ailment or physical disorder manifests in the body. Um, another reason could be our, our other past lives. So if we had trauma in a past life, and it was unresolved, uh, or if we died by a head injury, or we die by you know being stabbed, um, we come in and we may experience pain in that area, or if we die by decapitation or strangulation, we may have issues with our throat, 
you may have issues with their voice box or um, or the um, our ability to speak or, or truth. So there's many different reasons for that. So the approach would be uncovering the root cause. You know, where is this coming from? So uh, when I look at somebody and I ask that question, I just start getting information. You know, the timelines start opening up. Um, the events start opening up that are connected to this. Then the ages, you know, so if it's 10 or 12, 7, 5, they'll start showing up. And they'll start coming forward. So it's a gathering of information. And I invite all that information to come through because as we're going through the process, we're completing, we're healing, we're accepting, we are, you know, we, we are going through the process of reintegration into wholeness. And um, and one of the other ones that I, I kind of mentioned and didn't specifically say um, is when the vacancy is there and other things come in, uh, like an entity, like a, a demon, um, even like uh, galactic things that, that uh, you know, are in the dimensions like like Anunnaki, Draconians, we still have that energy vibration or whatever interference they created. So I look for all these things. So I look for the root cause. And sometimes, and actually many times, it's not just one thing. You know, uh, it's a series of things. It could be, yes, there's interferences, uh, there's some uh, past life trauma, and yes, there's some trauma in this lifetime. And so we look at the lesson, right? The lesson is empowerment. The lesson is you gave up your power at some point, or you thought you couldn't own your power, or somebody made you believe that you couldn't own your power, and now you're living this life of victimization. So we start clearing all of that, moving you back into owning your own power, into embodying your own power, into reconnecting to the light, into the strength in your connection with source, into creation within you. And we start activating your healing protocols in your physical body. We start activating, awakening the divine intelligence within your body because your body actually already knows how to heal. It already has those healing protocols, but because we've been so disconnected from it or we haven't really been paying attention or we haven't been able to communicate with it, then it's just been sort of in limbo waiting. Um, when we begin to do the work, the spiritual work or the energetic work, the, the body will catch up, but it's often a little bit slower in catch up. So there's ways to accelerate the healing process of the body, like working with the DNA, clearing the DNA um, at all levels and at all dimensions and across all bodies, um, bringing the new codes into the DNA, which will help accelerate the healing of the body. So again, you know, the, the approach is what are the root cause or what is the string of events in this lifetime, other lifetimes, this dimension of dimensions that is creating this current in the moment situation. And then we begin that process of clearing, healing, repairing, activating, restoring the body, bringing the spirit back into the body. You know, I mentioned the spirit hasn't been there. It's only owning the body or, you know, it, it had some trauma, you had some trauma in your childhood that the spirit has to be in the body. So we go back and retrieve the spirit. We help the spirit remember that is light, infinite possibility, and we help it awaken and, and we invite it to come back in and own the body. So it, it, it's, 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 I wouldn't say it's a lot. It's just sort of, you know, what do we need to do now? And where do we go from here? And what else is needed? And we're guided through this process by your higher self, by source, by the guides that are uh, creating and holding space in that moment. I, I love I love the fact that you know the body heals itself, but to think uh, on how much acceleration with energy that's an exciting prospect for me too. Um, I have a question followed by another question, and while you're answering that question, I I never do this, but I have to step. Uh, away from the computer for two minutes to make sure we don't go off air. <laughs> but um, okay. uh, the first question is, do birthmarks come from past lives, which was asked in the chat? And secondly, what other kind of things in this life come from past lives besides, you know, uh, the things that we talked about, sometimes physical ailments, things, but other various things. And, and I'll be back in two minutes. I'll private chat you when I'm back. So you know that I'm back too. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. That's okay. So it's, it, I love the question because the answer is not always, there, there isn't a definite answer for it. So for instance, do birthmark comes from the lifetime? Yes, possibly. 
but they also could come from another, another manifestation. They could also be a genetic, um, genetic information. So you may have a similar birthmark as your parents or grandparents, or or in the womb, um, as the cells, you know, were, uh, in as you were being created in the womb, then there was something happening within the cell. So there's so many really different reasons why you may have a birthmark or why you develop a um, a distinct um, beauty mark. Uh, so I hope that answers the question. Um, so what the part, the second part was what other things can we bring from other lifetimes? Uh, we can bring our wisdom. We can bring our level of happiness. We can bring also the really good things that we experience. We can bring our knowing. Um, we can bring our knowledge, like our knowledge about uh, different things like technology, um, the way the world works, uh, what we excelled at in other lifetimes. I'm sure you You've heard of child prodigies that they're just so amazing. They're so gifted at many different things. Or I mean, in, in, you know, they're gifted at one thing. But you know, when we think of prodigies, you know, they're they're gifted in in various things. So we bring that knowledge. We bring that self actualization from other lifetimes. Other we can also bring the memories of our experience. Like we can remember um, being at places. We can remember. Um, be, being in conversation with others, um, we can remember history. So we can we can bring that knowledge that is already there, and we can bring our gifts. So these are the you know these are the things that would really work for us. Um, that if we know it, we're bringing these in that we can really develop, right, uh, and create something really amazing with that. Um, other things that we can bring from other lifetimes would be, you know, we already talked about the things that are incomplete. Uh, so this actually is interesting because I do see this often. At the end, so this is like karma. Uh, at the end of the that lifetime, we often, not always, but often do a life review when we're in our deathbed. So these are the last thoughts that we're having. And sometimes we we'll say, I will never do this again, or I will never be this person. I will never be this life. Uh, or I'm filled with gratitude. So we have our life review and we can go in any direction. We can go into that. This didn't work for me or this was really amazing. And actually that's what we bring back or this that's what we carry forward. So if we say being a good person didn't really work for me. So then what do we do? We do things that are not kind. We do things that are not compassionate because that lifetime we think that didn't work, but that comes from not knowing that we chose to have that experience that comes from uh, not knowing that we we did serve a purpose. We express our soul contracts with others and they evolve because that's what we signed up for in our soul agreement. Uh, so that's what it comes from. So then we go into the awareness, we go into the awakening, we go into uh, going back to that place of that life review and resetting that experience and seeing yourself from a place of higher wisdom so that you can choose something different. Maybe you choose gratitude for yourself. Maybe you choose um, just appreciation of that life. So those are the things that we can bring in. Um, and another example of that would be, uh, let's say that you were very wealthy and people took advantage of you. And, and you felt like your whole life, people just maybe didn't care about you. They just wanted you for the money or had an interest in you. And maybe at the end, you didn't have any friends because you gave it all away or people just took advantage of you or you still had a, a lot of money, but you decided to give it not to your friends, not to your family, just, you know, to charity because you felt like they, you know, people didn't appreciate you for who you are. So what that may show up like in this lifetime, it may show up with not having a relationship with money, rejecting money or being very meager with money, um, being very, um, uh, like uh, just it be even having even though you would have so much you act like you're in a state of lack uh, you act like you don't have enough uh, and you don't treat people kindly in relationship to that to money so those are some of the things that we can bring in from other lifetimes besides the physical things besides the karmic things because besides the lessons that like end of life review that I appreciate that it's uh 
you know, I, I hear you say that where people have enough money, but they, they treat themselves like they don't, they treat others like they don't. I've seen that in a lot of people who are actually very well to do, uh, very rich. They will, they will buckle down and, and take away their ability to have something that they may really want or, or that they want to do or something that they feel like maybe they should help another person with. And then they're like, well, no, you know, I, I don't want to spend a thousand dollars for this or, or that. Uh, and some of that I know is just being smart with your money. You don't get to be rich if you're always blowing your money, uh, you know, in, in the way we, we perceive money and believe in money. But I've also seen people do it to the extent where they won't even treat their selves or help other people that they love. Um, and they have millions of dollars. So it's always funny to see that. And then you see some people who can't really make it from one check to the other and they're giving their money uh, to others and, and trying to help others and, and showing a lot of love that way too. So it's a very unique dynamic to look at people and, and life in general with money uh, because money is a really tricky thing. We all have beliefs that are extremely loaded, mm -hmm. whether we, we think so or not. Uh, money is yes. definitely a big, big issue on earth. Um, you know, I know, I know you do uh, a lot of work with people with money. Um, you know, I, I, I guess in my perspective to get, to get money. Okay. For you and your own experience, you have to let go of those limiting beliefs and, and the feeling of not having abundance and, and all of those things. But how do we even start that as a person uh, who, mm -hmm. who deals with these bad beliefs, who's been handed these beliefs by parents who had them and, and all of this stuff? Where do we start chipping away at that from? Yeah. So what you're describing is how we relate to money, right? Are we relating to money from the story of our parents? Are we relating to money from the viewpoint of society, you, know, you have to work hard, you have to do this and you have to earn it and you have to earn your value and you have to have to have to right? climb the ladder. So how we create comes from how we relate to money. Are we relating to money from it's outside us? And is it not available to us unless somebody else says that it is? You know, somebody else is placing the value Somebody else is saying that we're worthy now after going to college or after doing this or after doing that or after working so many years. So again, it's uh, to start changing or to start creating or to stop letting go or chipping away is to first realize how am I creating my life or how am I creating my relationship with money? How am I playing out my relationship with money? And of course, you notice the, the feelings that you have toward money. Notice the belief systems you have about money. And then after that is the choice. What do I want to live my life this way? Do I want, I want to always suffer? I want to, you know, be in survival. Do I want to struggle? Because really, again, as we're creator beings, we are creating that. We are creating that experience from that relationship. So when we decide and we make that choice, that creates an opening, right? And and it doesn't happen right away because we have all this other programming, we have this other sort of data that is still, if we, you know, in that scale, is still very heavy because that's all we've known, that's all we've experienced, that's all we've played out. But the more you make that choice, and the more you notice your relationship with money, you notice the triggers around money, you notice how you, you know, hold on to it or how you give it away, you get a better understanding of yourself. So as an example, uh, when you notice, you know, let, let's say that um, you, you know, you have a job and you work really, really, really hard and you get passed up for a promotion. So that means that they're not really seeing your value and if you didn't speak up, if you didn't go up for the promotion, you're not seeing your own value. So if you're not seeing your own value, they're not seeing your own value. If you're just hoping that they're going to notice you, then you're playing, you're being invisible, right? And that invisibility is unworthiness. I'm not worthy of this. I don't deserve this. I'm not good enough for this. So then we get to look at, well, where is this coming from? This unworthiness, this undeservingness is not enough because now it's playing out as manifesting in your reality of getting passed up for promotion. 
and that the money is not, co not going that you're still working and you're still expected to work hard uh, and you're putting yourself out there, but nobody's really noticing, right? Or you're being passed up. So we, so then we get to look at your, the way you're owning your value, the value of yourself. And then who are you deciding that is placing the value? Is it you choosing your value or is it society or is it your, your uh, employer? So we want to go through all these layers. We want to notice, again, it, it's a lot of information, right? But it's fun. It's fun to discern. It's fun to look at because it takes you one step closer to having. It takes you one step closer to accessing higher states of wealth, higher states of consciousness. Uh, you're breaking, deconstructing the story, the box that you've been living in, in the limitations that you place around yourself. You're deconstructing all of that by, by saying, oh, this is not mine. Oh, this is not working for me. Oh, I notice how this is getting in my way. So you begin to deconstruct all these belief systems, all these stories, all these ways that the world is reflecting to you. So in that case, the your environment reflected back to you, you're you're you know you're not being seen or you're not ready or you're not good enough. And so whatever we see being reflected back to us is actually what we're reflecting out. So we come back to self because we are creating our reality. So we're stepping into radical responsibility. We're not blaming everybody else. We're not blaming our parents for what they passed on, what they gave us. We're not blaming society. We're awakening from our dream. We're awakening from that state. And we're, and we're deciding, I'm not going to play this character in this chapter of my life anymore. I'm not playing the victim. I'm going to start playing the hero. And then we move, we take action to be the hero of our story. The hero of our story is creator is being radically responsible for what we are choosing, the actions that we're taking, the thoughts that we're having. So another example of that would be if, uh, let's say you have a business. Oh, I, I'm not hearing you any longer. I'm not sure if anyone else is. I'm not sure if that's my side or not. Um, I'll let you know when I hear you. If not, uh, I might jump out and jump back in. Or you could do the same if you're able to hear me. We, we get to embrace and how do we own our value? is by releasing the judgment that we have about ourselves, releasing the judgment of past experiences, the judgment of past situations that didn't work out for us, that we consider failures. We start forgiving. We start letting go. We start accepting ourselves for who we are. And when we do that, then we remove that blindfold. We, you know, we clear the, our eyes. We start seeing from unclouded eyes. We start seeing the truth of who we are. And we create this path of grace, this path of flow. We recognize our path and the way we're moving forward. And along the way, we have these little obstacles that are no longer limitations. They're no longer things that get in the way. They're just opportunities. So an, a, an opportunity would be, um, you know, I had this great promotion, but I didn't have the results that I wanted to have. And so I'm still talking about business. So that's an opportunity for us to reflect and see, first of all, why am I feeling this way? Second of all, what could have created that? What, did I not feel that I could hold the space for a large number of people to come in? So we start looking at that from that perspective. And it's a perspective of non-judgment. It's a perspective of observation and witnessing ourselves. Again, how we're relating to the world. Because that relationship is going to continue to move us forward. It's going to continue to open the door. It's going to continue to expand us or just the opposite. So we want to, you know, open the door. It's wide open. We want to break down the walls. We, we want to have, you know, this beautiful infinite space where we're creating. Uh, so again, as we are connecting to money, as we're thinking about money, we also want to think about it as energy. We often think about it as a tool. So we want to think about is energy. Everything is energy. 
and you are energy. So you're the same energy. And a hundred thousand dollars is the same as a thousand dollars because it's simply energy. So we are the ones that place that limitation on how much we can have based on their self worth and our value. So if we're stuck at a set point of let's say fifty thousand, but we really want one hundred and fifty thousand, then we want to look at what is this? You know, why are we only believing? Why are we only feeling? What is in our energetic field? that is holding on to this amount so we want to you know we, we go through the process of breaking through that in the in the ways that i described earlier looking at your ancestral lineage looking at your uh, your relationship with yourself your inner child what the inner child is holding um, a lot of times is the it, what's needed is to remove that burden and responsibility of the inner child that got stuck in a certain experience and help that part of you age up into now and then invite the part of you to come along with you on the ride, not feeling like the inner child has to take care of creator or is responsible for creating. So again, there's so many different ways that we can, you know, we can create an opening to move forward. Uh, the mind involving the mind, the body, the spirit, the soul. So we, you know, we make that decision. We start adopting powerful belief systems, then we start connecting to. Uh, who we are, we're the uh, powerful, valuable, we are enough. Then we start embodying that energy, that frequency of self-worth, of divine power, divine will. We start taking action from that place. And we just look at the information around us. We don't judge it. So the information around us would be triggers, would be things that uh, are not going so well. And then we celebrate the things. We actually celebrate both because they're all an opportunity for you to continue to ascend and to continue to elevate your wealth consciousness. Yeah, that's so. to me that's very much <laughs> as important as the the successes as watching the failures that we have too. It's it's a hugely important part, and I want to thank you too uh, for sharing that concept. Money is a tricky spot, and it's such such a wide amount of, of energy in every human's lives uh, and, and such a difficult thing for most people to get uh, a comfortable grip on. So thank you for sharing um, some of these insights too. Believe it or not, it's already time for the lightning round. Uh, time has flew by tonight. Um, but I'm going to ask you a couple questions, uh, just real quick questions that are benevolent. Sure. They're, they're better for the audience to get to know you as a person and as a human being and uh, kind of get to know you from that angle instead of uh, some of the people in the chat who've come who are very familiar with your work and, and people who are getting to know your work. Um, the first one is, what is your favorite color? Oh, wow, well, that's a hard question because I actually have a couple of favorite. Um, blue is, my, is one of my favorites, uh, purple and pink. Oh, are three oh. that I, you know, I, they're interchangeable for me. Those are all great colors. Purple is is one of my favorites. Uh, I don't think I've heard pink on the on the show since we've been back uh, a yeah. year ago. It's more like but, a fuchsia pink. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's actually a very fascinating color. Purple is my favorite, and uh, a few other people who've had, and we've had blue quite a few times. My wife's uh, is, is blue too. So, um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, the second question that I like to ask people is what is your favorite food? Um, uh, my favorite food is it's just something grilled, but I, I if I was going to just grab something and make it quick, it would probably be salmon. So like grilled mm. salmon with grilled vegetables, a little bit of rice. Uh, it's quick and easy and healthy. Um, and it's, you know, just very wholesome. As long as it's, it's cooked in that way. <laughs> hey, as long as it's done right. It's, uh, the salmon's wonderful. I love I love that. Thank you. Um, what is your favorite band and or song? Hmm. Wow. I can't think of a favorite band. Um, but... Um, and I think this is just popping into my head because of my, I, my, I hear my, 
micro singing is confidence. Um, I, I think her uh, is, um, what is the artist's name? Lovato is her last name. Oh, Demi Lovato. Yes, yes, it's in the, it's called Confidence. I've not heard that one. I've only heard a couple things that she's ever done. Um, I don't listen to a lot of newer music, um, but one of the Skyscraper songs she sang, it was a very, very yeah. beautiful song, yeah. Really enjoyed that song and, and that one too. So yeah, uh, Demi Lovato is amazingly talented and she's uh, opened up to the community that we're in now. She's become very metaphysical, uh, new age. I hate to put those labels on it, but that's kind of what the <laughs> the, the greater <laughs> community is. is um, and she's very much into that now, uh, which is awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, what is your favorite animal? Uh, <laughs> all baby animals are my favorite. I, I don't have one at the moment. I mean, well, I have dogs, I have cats, and we're now getting in deer with horses. So I would say um, babies, uh, pups, or kittens are adorable and we love them. Uh, and I would say now it's more horses, or we're getting into you know that connection and relationship with horses. Mm, mm, yeah, babies are always amazing. They're they're adorable, uh, no matter what type of animal. They, I exactly. mean, some of them that some of them they gotta wait till they get a little older before they're adorable. But you know, uh, <laughs> like the ones that kind of look like a little baby rats. You know what I mean? Like uh, oh, kittens yeah. and and puppies can even do that. Some breeds, but anyway, <laughs> that's a beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. And um, uh, what? Out of any place that you've ever been in the world, what has been your favorite place for both the beauty and the energy, the feel of that place? Mm -hmm. um, I would say Hawaii has been for me one of those places that I could just be there and just feel the vibration and the energy. Um, parts of Mexico as well, like Tulum, uh, where it's been just very beautiful being out in the lush nature uh, and at peace um, and just being in the state of surrender. Um, so I guess it would be like tropical or uh, open, beautiful spaces in nature. But those really stand out for me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, definitely places I want to check out. Um, I was actually invited to, to go to Mexico City and I couldn't uh, it was too close by without the logistics for passports and, and all that stuff. But oh, okay. uh, I do I do want to go to Mexico, um, especially in, in a few places in the central and, and south parts of Mexico, which is really beautiful. I mean, the whole place I've seen from pictures and videos and movies is got its beautiful spots. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely amazing. Um, what And the, the last question I'll have for you for our lightning round is one that has made a few people uncomfortable. However, um, I, from how you've described, I, I doubt that this would uh, be one of a traumatizing question for you. It's always meant <laughs> to be benevolent, but what is your favorite childhood memory? Oh, my favorite childhood memory. Uh, traveling with my grandparents. Um, so we used to take, uh, it was like a, um, it was like a journey that we took from our hometown to another town. Um, and it, we, we went back, up, up, we went on horseback. Um, and the reason that was special is that it was just kind of the whole process of waking up really early in the morning. And it was a, a small group of people and it was all family. So, you know, you, you got to be with family, cousins, extended uncles, so it was sort of like a tribe, you know, like a tribe traveling together. So that's why it, it you know, it's, it's one of my favorite memories of, the, of my childhood. And and then, of course, the journey and the talks and the stories and the conversation. And then, you know, like picnicking um, at different beautiful spots. It was uh, it was about a you know four to five hour um, commute on horseback, depending how fast we're going or how many stops we wanted to take and, and then of course getting there and getting there was fun too because it was a celebration uh, it was like sort of a big fiesta happening but my my favorite part was that part of the journey just 
just it it, it almost it, you know, I could imagine myself in the ancient times as we nomad from one place to another as a tribe, yeah, and in an experience, and there was learning, and there was passing of knowledge. Um, so it was beautiful. That does sound beautiful. I always admire uh, large families who spend time together. Uh, you know, it's something in our, our Western culture that's not always appreciated as much as it could be. Um, and and really, uh, the the family unit with that is is where you do do all your learning and, and you're connecting and learning how to be uh, a human being in the best way because you got all these people to bounce back what you're doing wrong and right as you're growing and and becoming older and uh it just sounds like a really beautiful journey thank you for sharing that with us um we're almost to the time where I, i'm just going to hand the mic over to you but before before we do that uh i really want to say thank you for sharing your experience it's something beautiful on the show uh we always have a lot of uh unique experiences and a lot of unique people in the way that they share uh but the way that you've come to share tonight especially um uh, not knowing me as well as a lot of our other guests does and not knowing the show as well uh, and still coming on and, and sharing is is always amazing testament to, to a person's excitement to share. But also, you know, uh, a lot of the things you say tonight, uh, I really resonated with and, and really feel similar to in, in a lot of aspects of, of how we do our best healing processes and how we, we clear so much of our energy. So thank you for sh being excited to share. Thank you for sharing and thank you for wanting to help others. That's a huge thing that I really really focus on too is is how much a person shows up to help so thank you for all of that and uh i i appreciate you coming tonight and i i want to give you a chance now to share with anyone and everyone all of the things that you might have going on if you have uh, mm -hmm. events or anything like that uh where they might be able to get a hold of you um or or what type of uh, of energy from your work that you wanted to to let people know about uh the mic mm -hmm. is yours Thank you, and, and thank you also for the invitation. Uh, it, you know, I, I was filled into the experience that we're going to co-create together, and it just felt right and wonderful. So I really appreciate being here with you, and also the work that you're doing, uh, the and how you share with others, and having me or allowing me to be part of that. Such yeah. an honor. So thank you so much. Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so my website is 360prosperity.com if anybody wants to uh, write that down or jump on that. Uh, on my website, I have special promotions that are happening right now where I take you on a journey, and you can go into the special promotion page, where I take you on a journey of healing at the multidimensional level. The focus is around abundance and prosperity, um, but the healing that we do, uh, is actually the core or how I approach the healing is the core to having it all. So even if your uh, if your focus is not money, if it's self-actualization, accessing your gifts and expressing your divine self, then you know the the work is still very similar, just with a different direction. Uh, so I invite you to come to my uh, my page 360 prosperity you can opt in get more information you can also set up a complimentary discovery session that's the first thing that kind of shows up and if you have questions have specific things that are going on with you or specific goals then we can talk about how i can help you what would be the direction um, and i do a mini reading so you get a little bit of an insight of where you are and then the gap to where you want to be and how we can work through that I also have some packages in the tab that says work with me. So personal development, professional development, business coaching, um, because of my previous background in the corporate America, um, in business development, marketing, sales and sales training. I bring that as well, because as on healers and entrepreneurs, we need also to create a powerful foundation to build wealth and to build prosperity or to live the lifestyle that we desire to be rewarded for what we do and if we want to create more like more courses um, uh, then we you know we go to building streams of income or building an empire that i can also support you with through my marketing agency as well uh, so again personal development self-actualization activating your human potential 
activating your divine gifts and supporting you in your ascension uh, to serving humanity uh, and also, again, living the life that you desire. Uh, currently, again, in special promotions, I do have an event that is starting soon. Um, and there are two packages there, so you can take a look at them to see which one feels in alignment with you. I also have other events that are coming up, uh, Energy Alchemy, which is a program around your you becoming supernatural, uh, you uh, activating and fine-tuning your existing gifts, the further developing them and activating and developing other gifts as this superhuman self. So that's Energy Alchemy. And I also have another program, uh, uh, Heal Your Body. This is more, it's, the work is multidimensional, but the focus is for, the, for anyone that is having an experience, a physical imbalance that they want to heal, work through. So that's specifically of that, if that's your focus. Um, the, the name of my company, 360 Prosperity, uh, came from the approach that I take to to self-actualization, so connection to self, human potential, to wealth consciousness activation, again, creating from that space of abundance and prosperity and love. So, so first the connection to yourself, love, but also relationship with others. So that's sort of the umbrella of the work that I do uh, and the programs that I offer are, you know, they, they support those main areas. Uh, in your development. So there's a lot of information here that you can find. Again, if you have a specific question, you can go into contact me or just opt in or, or set up a complimentary discovery session. Um, also, I heard you share that you're going to be in the Conscious Expo or part of that next year. I will be there with you too. So I'm excited oh, beautiful. to meet you in person. Yes. Yeah, it'll be um, great. Be doing the same. Yeah, it's, um, I'm excited about that. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about what's what's coming up and how uh, life is unfolding and just so excited to work with and share with and facilitate for um, millions of people as we move forward our ascension. So that is my greatest intention. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you for sharing. And I, I, I can't wait to see you. You'll be able to um, meet me at the Conscious Life Expo. I know Debbie will be there and my wife and uh, our daughter will be there also. So it'll be something that you'll be able to meet both, uh, most of the family, all but my son uh, will be with us. But uh, it'll be great to meet. And I, I'm glad that you're out there um, sharing the energy in the excitement way too, uh, that you have. So thank you for coming on tonight. I really appreciate you being here and thank you for sharing. Thank you. My pleasure. Lots and of love thank, to everyone. Oh, thank you. And, and lots of love to all of you guys here in the audience, whether you are in the matrix mind media, all of our brainiacs out there, whether you're in our ET whisper YouTube or the enlightenment evolution, our Facebook page. Thank you for joining us live. Remember all the links for our guests will be in the description, no matter where you did. If you listen to it live tonight, it will be there. And if you listen to it in the future on conscious um, awakening network or the forbidden knowledge news network, the links will be there to join us next Wednesday, guys, 10 o'clock PM Eastern seven Pacific. And we will be here next week. Um, and we will share who our guest is as we're going through. Um, Tonight was a little crazy getting here, but we made it all tonight here, guys. Uh, and thank you again, Maria, for showing up and, and being a part of tonight, too. It was really amazing night. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. All right, guys. I love you guys very much. Thank you for being a part of the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. Kalina sends her love to all of you guys, too. She wasn't able to join us in the chat as, as she's doing something very important also. But she sends her love with all of you guys. We'll see you next Wednesday, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific, on the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. We'll see you guys there on the other side. Good night, everybody.